initially, you know, I was just, I, I thought, okay, this looks interesting, you know, I'm bored and um, my guides are telling me that this is something that I might actually get something out of. And I thought, you know what, when you're guided to do something, it's usually for a reason. So I said, well, why not? Typically, most of these things have way too much theatrics and lies, but to be honest with you, this one's not that bad. It's I never heard of this series before, but it caught my eye, and I watched a few episodes, and I thought, you know, it's not that bad. Um, these Woods Are Haunted, I believe, is the, the name of it. So they've got three different seasons and thus far, and, um, you know, there's, there's some things that I'm not a fan of, like some people that they interview, you can tell that they're lying. Um, but a lot of people that they interview truthfully believe that that is what they saw and whether or not that's the truth is you can debate but they at least do truthfully believe it um you know i have a clairvoyant gift that i can tell when someone's lying and i so that gives me kind of a gauge of how much of it's being truthful and how much of it's not and at the end a lot of these different people in different episodes were saying basically the same thing not everybody but a lot of them were basically saying the same thing they were saying you know we don't really know what's out there we think we do but we really don't and these mythical creatures actually could exist you know and and we were skeptic before but now we think that you know something is out there and who who knows what else is out there you know and that was both frightening and um comforting at the same time frightening because a lot of the way that these people reacted to it is alarming the way that they reacted to it is exactly the way i expect them to respond which is not good and if they know that that things like us are out there for me i'm a shapeshifter if they know that that exists they know anything exists what are they going to do with that information if one day they can have proof of it and record something and prove to the world and you know it, see how badly everyone else reacts you know it's going to be terrible you know things are going to get haunted to death and eradicated and just like it was in the witch hunt era i mean that that's like my brain going wild on conspiracies on you know all the bad things that could happen if too many people like that that respond like that you know start believing but then there's another side to it that some of these people just kind of accepted it and there's another side to it that i'm thinking um you know they're not afraid they just kind of accept that it's reality and and it's kind of comforting to know that it's not just me and a couple of the people that i've run across my life where I've met that have either seen proof or are actually a part of it like I am. It's not just a few in a needle in a haystack type thing. It's a lot more prevalent than I th once thought. Because if that many people are saying that, and they have an, enough content to make three entire seasons out of it, it just makes me think, that it, and it has enough of an audience too. Think about it, they wouldn't they wouldn't create this if they didn't think it would have an audience. It makes me think that, you know, I'm not as alone as I once thought. So I have mixed feelings about that. I want to talk specifically about one episode in general because I do think that a lot of a lot of these just get carried away with speculation. Maybe they're not lying, but they they're definitely not understanding and they are assuming things that they shouldn't. And this is really eerie and I think this is why I was guided to, to watch, especially this episode in particular. Because initially I thought, nah, it's just a coincidence. It just, it sounds like what happened to me, but it couldn't, uh, it couldn't be the same people I ran across that night. There's no way. It just couldn't, you know, but too many different things were going on for me to be like, yeah, this, this, um, this is just a coincidence. Like 
Like, for example, the, where I remember being in relation to where they were, the direction where I was compared to them was the same direction that they described, and I will bring that up in a minute. Um, you know, but I have some audio of it. I don't have the means to do an actual uh, um, video of it, but I can pull up some audio of this episode real quick. Um, it's better though for me to say in order, so I'm just going to go ahead and start at the beginning to compare, you know, the things that I found that actually was different about it. But there's so much that's similar. I'm sitting here thinking, how could it not be? How could they how could they not be the same people too much of it is i think the only things that is different is because of their perception like they, they say you know that birds they hear a branch moving birds fly off but you know it's night time that doesn't happen at night so what they thought was birds i'm pretty sure it was the raccoon that was with there are several different things out there i actually saw those different things but apparently from where they were situated, they could not see it. There's a creek that runs in between where I was and where the, the cabin was. And raccoons love water. So there's a lot of raccoons around rustling in the, in the bushes and in the trees and things. Um, so at least two or three raccoons. There was a herd of deer. Um, and I unintentionally scared them off when I came there. So they, they, they're talking about that as the first thing that they heard. But they think it's birds. I'm telling you right now, it's, you're not going to hear a flock of birds like that at night. So I think it was a raccoon. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is there are slight differences, but I think it's just based on their perception of what they thought that they heard, but because they couldn't actually see it, they don't know for sure what it was. And this is kind of my whole point, because they definitely didn't understand what I was. Back then, I didn't know that I could shapeshift. Back then, and until this day, you know, it's only shifted partially. It was, it was um, just me, completely human, in human clothing, um... You know, and just trying to let that animal side of my spirit free. Trying to go out there and like the um, animal soul people, Therians, will tell you that we all, you know, have this urge to go out there and, and be free. So run on all fours and if you run on your hands and feet, you can be quite fast if you know how to do it right. And... So basically what I would do is I'd do that to feel free. I'd go out at night under a full moon because it was, you could see really good then. And it was a good place to practice running in the woods on all fours and things without stumbling into stuff. So um, I would do that. I would think I was alone and I would howl. And there was a time where I howled. I thought because I was on the other side of the creek, they wouldn't care. I was nowhere near their property. Before I even did that, though, you know, like I said, I had come along and I had scared some of the animals and they were hearing that. Let me just play you some audio. I was thinking, like, it was going to be me and it's going to be a funny joke. You know, they got me good. I first knew that Matt was really scared because he blocked the stairs. And coming out of the woods back there, I saw this black thing. <laughs> I purposely did dress in all black because I, did, I didn't want to be seen. And we see this creature. It was crawling. The moon was really bright that night, so it lit up the entire backyard, but only good enough to where you could see the figure, but you couldn't see, like, details of it. So, um, they just said it was a bright moon, and that, that's the same. It's not too much of a coincidence, not yet, but we'll we'll get to much eerie coincidence later. So at this point, I am just on all fours because at this point, I don't realise that they are. You know, I, I've seen I've seen the flashlight a few times, but um, you know, one thing they don't mention either. Once the one thing they don't mention 
is that they actually came off of way off of the cabin and started walking towards me they don't they don't say that i don't know why they don't say that um but there's a lot more about the flashlight than they're saying um at first you know it was just someone come out with a flashlight went back inside but they actually came out a second time later and they don't talk about that they came out a second time later with a flashlight again and they just kept walking towards me and walking towards me and walking towards me and i thought they got a gun and they're drunk, they're gonna shoot me um i heard somebody talk about coyotes thinking it's a coyote and i thought okay they're gonna shoot me because they think i'm a coyote so at that point i stand up and hopefully because the light's shining right at me Hopefully they realise at that point I'm just some stupid kid in the woods and they'll leave me alone. Um, so let's let's listen to what else they're saying so they catch up with what their side of the story here. What is it? Uh, bear. Look at those shoulders. Its shoulders were really, really broad, really wide. I was terrified because my body knew it was something different. It stood straight up. He was huge. Taller than any human. Uh, no, it's not. It was something i never seen before. And it freaked me out. Any human. I was just on a hill, you dumb fuck. On I was standing like on a, a hill. Human. It's coming right towards us. And that's when I started freaking out. Whatever it is, it's coming for the cabin. It was getting closer and closer, like walking towards us. Uh, no, terrified. not really. I was and just I going down the hill. I don't want to take my the eye off this thing. This to know what it's going to do. I was going on the path I was just ready to scream. across the creek. That's all I did. Down the hill, ran across the path. And it stopped and got back into crawling on all fours. And then all of a sudden, he just went right back, like disappeared right into the deepness of the woods. Yes, yeah, because you get sh shining the fucking flashlight at me. The others bounced away from the window, ran and woke up everybody. Alyssa, Colin! Because I knew it was out there. I thought that, okay, well, maybe he's like scared of us. She goes there. So, this is the back and forth of them a lot. You know, um, some time passed by. I thought that I could go away and come back, and they wouldn't we be there. We heard to the right of us. But they were still watching. Could tell it was not a human. They were still watching when I came back. It sounded like something none of us had ever heard before, and it was freaking us all out. That was me howling. <laughs> I was still learning to howl back then. And all of a sudden, it was super quiet. Yeah, that's because you shined fucking flashlights at me. That's why I got quiet. The I thought you had a gun. I thought you were going to shoot me, thinking I was a coyote. There. He's right there. You could see something that zoomed by. There. I was scared. I was, like, panicky scared. Everybody was just looking at the front of the cabin, but I kept hearing something behind me. Yeah, you heard either a coon or a deer that I scared earlier. Something kept taking a couple steps. That was the and fucking every time deer. I would turn around, it would stop. That was the deer, you dumbass. Footsteps getting closer behind me. Guys, the deer ran towards you. On that side too. Ran away from like me and towards the cabin. At least two or three of whatever that was that was stalking us. <laughs> no one, one was stalking was like you. Trying to distract us while the other one would sneak up behind us. 
It was coons and deer that run away from me. I was expecting something to pop out at any moment. And then the noises that started coming all around us, it felt like. Um, I did move around because you kept, you kept going away water. and coming back thinking you'd leave. But you, kept, you, you know, stayed there. You it was so, so active. I felt surrounded. I went and I howled several different places, okay, because they were freaking me out and I thought I could go somewhere else and howl. And apparently they just heard me wherever I was. The woods were too small. Different place than what I live now. Just these people who weren't used to hearing, I guess, hearing things like that. I was trying to sound like a coyote more than anything else that I blend in with, you know, what was naturally in the area. I didn't want to sound like a wolf too much because I thought, you know, but also, like I said, I was still learning how to howl, so I'm sure it sounded odd to them. I was, like, scared to death. And then all of a sudden, everything stopped. Not a branch, nothing. Even the setup Everybody's of this looking, cabin no knows, looks you know, really similar to on, what but, uh, the cabin looks like in real life. Or anything else, but just to watch and just to keep making sure it's not coming towards us. I ran across the path in front of the creek, and I went away. You were out there almost all night. I did not feel safe until 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, believe me, I was gone way after that. Sorry, way before that. I left when you started coming out with the flashlight, walking towards me, which you failed to mention. But they did say they were out there for a long time, until 4 a.m., so... I'm going to check you can that infer that they're, life. you can infer that they're, um, you know, looking and searching for at least part of that time. They don't just come right out and say that, but they they do say that they were out for a long time, looking. They just neglected to say that they came towards me with a bloody flashlight. Um, I think I was talking over that lass, so we're going to rewind back because I think I was talking over her when she said what direction. It, she initially saw me in. Woods back there. I saw this black thing. <laughs> There's the part where she says the location. And we see this creature. It was crawling. Really, really broad, really wide. When does it say I'm that? terrified because my bitch taller than any human. No, I was standing on a hill. Where is the thing about it? It was something I'd never seen before. And it freaked me out. Jeez. And it just started walking on two legs like a human. When does it it's say? It's towards us. And that's when I started freaking out. Whatever it is, it's coming. Piss me off. Where is it? They're like walking towards us. I was terrified. And now I can't move. <laughs> I don't want to take my eye off of this. And it stopped. And it got back into crawling on all fours. And then all of a sudden, he just went right back, like disappeared right into the deepness of the woods. Where is it? Where is the thing that it says about... I'm gonna go get the others. Bounced away from the window, ran and woke up everybody. Alyssa! Somewhere oh. it says that, uh, that I... I thought that... To the right okay, of them. Well, he's like scared of us. But I'm, come on now. Oh, I just, I just missed it. It's coming up soon. Just bear with me. I keep missing it. So I, so I can't fast forward because I'll miss it again. It says... We heard noises to the right of us. Yep, there you go. So, I, I apologise for that. I just wanted you to hear that again. So, I, I was off to the right then. Um, before I went down the hill and went um, to the... 
Well, actually, I'll say this. I initially went down the hill. I ran on that path on the other side of the creek. And then I went further away. I circled back round, came back, and then eventually went back up the trail, back up the hill. Um, and that was when I was back on my way home again um so you know um i made the mistake of honestly my guys were telling me not to do it but i did anyway i made the mistake of i uh, wasn't as wise as i was so this was at least 10 more years ago of um howling right in front of the cabin um thinking that no one would would be there you know um and obviously they they were um so apparently you know when i went away and held somewhere else temporarily and i thought they would just think it's yotis and go back inside apparently they didn't um so by the time i circled back around i was just you know trying my best to stay as low as I could and stay behind trees and and things and and you know at one point they got so close to me that I thought if I don't get up and stand on two legs and show them that I'm not a yoti that they shouldn't shoot me to death if I don't get up and stand up in, and run away like that because they're going to find me and my theory is that they're going to find me and not and just blindly shoot and not know what I am so i had made a decision they're getting so close with the flashlights which is what they failed to fucking mention um that i you know stand up and run off um so you know, eventually you know i don't i don't try again i just eventually i finally say you know what, i'm going back home and i actually went back home way before 4 a.m. They, they stayed out there till 4 a.m. That's crazy. You know, I, I was gone, you know, probably by, I don't know, at least 1 a.m. Probably to 2 a.m. the latest. I can't remember exactly what time it was when I went out there. But it wouldn't have been any longer than that. Probably just gone by 1 a.m. Um... So it was just basically Ethereum out there trying to be free. That's all it was. It wasn't Bigfoot. I was standing on a hill. They should know that there's a hill there. Because, you know, in the daytime you can see the hill on the property. So I'm very, under, very um, confused as to how they thought that I was taller than that, you know. Um, but these, these people basically thought it was Sasquatch and later they, um, look in the dirt and it shows an actual photo of what's in the dirt. And I can tell you right now, that's not a footprint. That is from a, typically what it looks like is, is exactly what it looks like. It's from a rabbit. Rabbits will, will with their claws, will, will dig like that in little patches of the grass and dig up some of the grass and it'll look just like that. So I think it's a wild hare that was doing that. Um, there was a bridge that they had that they they could go across the creek with. Although you didn't need it, you could just jump. Um, in certain places you could jump. Um, I made the mistake of thinking that because I was on the other side of the creek, they wouldn't care. But what I'm trying to say is, they, the next day, I'm just walking normally, you know, the next day, just taking a walk. And they are... Um, this, I do see the people fascinated at something on the ground um, on the other side of that 
uh, bridge, that little tiny bridge. Um, and I hear overhear them saying, what do you think that is? But I had no idea that they were taking pictures of what they thought was a footprint, which wasn't even a footprint at all. You know, they weren't even in the right place. I was barefoot, so if they if they had gone in the right place, um, they would have seen probably the I, I walk on the tips of my feet, even if you know, especially when you're running on all fours, even your hind feet, you're walking on the tips of them. So, um, you know, it wouldn't have been the heel, you wouldn't see anything with the heel of the foot, you would only see. Um, the front part to the foot, um, you know, that would be a totally different track, but you could still make out that it was pretty more or less human, you know. At that time, like I said, I had no idea what it really was, so I was just doing that as a human, a regular, ordinary human, um, in desperation to try and free that side of me, so, you know, get depressed and you don't know what to do with yourself if you don't give yourself an outlet and anyone who's staring will understand that um, but anyway it's it, it's really sad because they like were ready to kill me apparently um, they were that scared and all because I just howled a little bit and they thought that all those other animals, the raccoons, the, the, the herd of deer, were all the same thing. And they just assumed that the path, the path that, that's just the, that, that's just the path. It was, it was, it was a lot quieter to go through that path than it was to, to trek through crunching, loud crunching of leaves. It was much quieter to walk the path. And so, I went down that path hoping I could sco scoot by them. Apparently they still saw me. And, you know, it's just like, okay, what the fuck do I do at this point? You know, they already see me. But, you know, my point is, you know, I, I stood up to try and make them realise I was human. And they just, they still think I'm some monster. And not only that, they think I'm coming for them. They think I'm coming at them. When I ran away, you know, th this is this is what I don't like about humanity. You know, they, they arrogantly assume that it's all about them, and they immediately assume the worst. I was just out there trying to, you know, prevent myself from from feeling like I was in a cage. My whole life, I was trying to give myself freedom. And to be myself when I couldn't. I lived in an apartment at the time. I couldn't be myself at home. Because people in the apartment would hear me. So I went out there to be myself because I had nowhere to, nowhere else to go. It wasn't anything about them at all. And even if it was just a yoti. You know. I don't understand why you would have to go out there with a gun. And a flashlight. Well, I don't know if they had guns or not. I don't. But the energy of how scared they were, they could have. They most definitely went out there with flashlights. And in that area, people would shoot yo re regularly shoot yotis in the woods. So it wasn't outlandish for me to think that they would have shot me had they think I was yoti. But you know, there's just this human energy, human logic. That I've never understood, you know. I've I've never understood why your reaction always has to be something like that, um, or almost always. You know why you can't just think through it and say, okay, what are the, all the possible reasons for something or someone doing something like this? You know. So I do feel like I have to say something because, you know. I am that person that, that you apparently thought was, you know, I, I just, I feel like I need to set the record straight. I 
tell you what really happened. This is really bizarre that this this gets on a a show like this. It's really bizarre that that um. But it was it's enough of the details that I just knew. You know the location of all the other animals, what happened first, what happened next, you know, um, how they responded, especially the next day when I saw them looking in the dirt, you know, at something and saying, what is that? What made that? Not knowing that, that they thought it was a Bigfoot, <laughs> uh, you know, print or whatever. I'm just saying, you know, you put two and two together and you realise there's too many really pinpoint coincidences for you to be like this is not a coincidence you know i mean it's just if it was a coincidence it, the direction i was standing in i just i mean it's just the way that the cabin looked it looked very similar a lot of times if it's not the actual building they'll at least try to replicate it i'm telling you it looked really similar to the actual cabin that was there in real life even the landscape looked really similar. The, the trees looked similar. I mean, it, it just, um, if it wasn't, if they didn't film it at that exact location, they at least tried to, to replicate it. Um, and it was just too similar to what I remember, you know. Um, too similar to be anything else. So... Um, you know, I like to think it's a coincidence and it's just somebody that has a similar story. But what else could it be? And that one lad, his accent makes me believe, you know, that it was a, you know how they say some locations and names have been changed to, to you know, uh, preserve or, you know, whatever the identity or conceal the identity, uh, privacy of the, you know, whatever. Uh, it makes me think his that one lad's um, his his accent and his voice sounds really similar to what I heard. And it just it just makes me think that that was him, you know, especially the area where it really was. Um, Things that have changed for film, you know, you can't always go by where that really was because, like I said, they they say it it changed it. The location is the names, the people is changed on purpose. Um, I just I feel like the uh, there's no way to know for sure. But let let me just say this: if it's not the same people that I ran into that night, then. I'm willing to bet that it was a different person in a very similar situation who was doing a very similar thing that I was doing. An animal soul person who was out there trying to feel free. Uh, it was not fucking Bigfoot. But I'm just telling you, there's too many needlepoint things. That they were looking in the ground, fascination with the ground the next day. I mean, it's just, like I said, it's too many things. You know, um, I just, it just, I, I just, it's like a gut instinct that these are the same people I ran across. What are the odds? I know, but I just, I think it is. Um, just in case it's not, though, you know. Hopefully it it makes you aware of you know just how dangerous it is to assume things about what you may see or hear out in the woodlands and and what you may you know um, just 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 take a a breather for a minute and and just you know dare to think that it's not after you dare to think that it's not all about you that that it's dare to think it's not vicious or evil 
just dare to think that it has absolutely nothing it might have absolutely nothing to do with you you know just just, just dare to think that before you automatically assume it's out there to like kill you or eat you or whatever come